If you want to produce a great video, you're going to need great sounding audio along with your picture. In this series of videos, we'll explain how to effectively work with lavalier mics and rig them on talent. This segment will focus on using the tie bar and forming the correct newsman's loop. Tie bars are a quick and easy way to rig someone, provided that it's okay for your audience to see the microphone attached to your talent. First, a few words about proper set etiquette. Rigging mics, cables, and transmitter body packs requires a degree of intrusion into boundaries of privacy and personal space. For some of the people that you may be working with on camera, getting mic'd may be a new experience. Presenting oneself as tidy and professional will go a long way to putting the talent at ease. Always introduce yourself to talent and ask for their permission to attach the microphone. If talent is hesitant, enlist a crew member of the opposite sex to assist you and always make sure a chaperone is present when working with minors. Power up and test the microphone before placing it on the talent. Be sure the battery is fresh, especially if it's a wireless mic. Before the shoot, wipe down the wire with some armor all to keep it soft and pliable. This will also cut down on cable noise. Before approaching the talent, take a moment to assess the situation and predetermine where to mount the mic. The basic choices include one of the lapels or center chest, especially if they're wearing a tie, a button-down shirt, or blouse. It's very important to note that women's blouses open from the opposite side than men's shirts. That means the tie bar needs to be flipped before it's clipped on the talent. A lapel is a good choice if the talent is in a sports coat, vest, or cardigan sweater. Besides looking directly into camera, think about to which side your talent is most likely to turn when not facing straight ahead. Lecturers and speakers may often turn towards one side in order to reference a large projection screen or video monitor. Members of panels tend to turn towards the host or moderator. Once the orientation of the clip has been determined, insert or snap the lavalier capsule into place. Handling noise can carry along the mic cable, much in the way that vibrations carry along a guitar string. Pluck a guitar string and you get a sound. Lay your finger against the string and the guitar goes silent. We're going to use the tie bar to stop vibrations along the mic cable. This widely used technique is known as the newsman's loop. Once the microphone is inserted into the spring clip, bring the cable around and up through the hinge of the tie bar forming a J. Attach the jaws of the tie bar to wardrobe and then continue the loop behind the clothing. This is the important part. Secure the loop by allowing the teeth of the jaw to close on the cable. Don't worry, it won't bite through the wire. It was designed to work this way. The tie bar now acts like a strain relief and guards the mic capsule from any tugging. It also acts like a finger and mutes any vibrations traveling up the cable. Complete the rigging by tucking the trailing cable out of sight. You can hide it inside the jacket or with the talent's permission, undo a few buttons and slip it inside the shirt and down to the waistband where you can bring it around. The thin wires connecting the mic capsule to the power modules on the lavaliers do not have the strength of heavy-duty XLR cables and should not be used as extension cords. Always anchor the power module directly onto talent. Don't use the thin connecting wires to run back to camera or even to where talent is sitting. If the talent gets up suddenly and walks away, those thin wires could easily be damaged or torn out. Clip the power module to a belt or waistband or stuff it in a pocket. Sometimes we even run the cable down a pants leg and secure everything at the ankle. Use an XLR cable back to your recorder and unplug the talent if they need to move around. Sometimes on television, you may see someone wearing what appears to be an upside down lavalier. This is done on purpose as a way of reducing popping caused by wind noise. They say that we're supposed to breathe by inhaling through our nose and exhaling through our mouth, but not everyone does. If the talent faces downward a lot, or exhale strongly through the nose, then soft puffs of wind could enter the sound ports and strike the microphone diaphragm. One option is to use a windscreen, but those little foam marbles can be visually unappealing, get lost, or worse yet, rub against the clothes creating unwanted noise. However, if the lavalier is omnidirectional, it makes no difference if it faces right side up or upside down. When the lav is inverted, 
Those breaths are blocked by the sealed bottom of the mic, which is now facing upward. Upside down miking requires a bit of practice and looks pretty strange to audiences, so only use it when necessary. Check out some of the other videos in this series to learn more about lavaliers, including how to conceal them under wardrobe. In the video studio or on location, Audio Technica has you covered.